Only the worst kind of white people like that. Mm-hmm. That's the article I read. Yeah, I know they're right. You, I'm you generate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was missing, bro. <laughs> What's up? What's going on? Oh, I thought we were carry it on. No. We're going to have that for like 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm Ben. And this is Daniel. That's perfect. And this is another bad podcast. <laughs> uh, yo, already you said exactly what I wanted you to. Hell yeah. Is that how you want me to say Hell yeah, time? brother. Dilly dilly. I just like that you said and Daniel. We need to make a tradition. Anytime we inadvertently mention Dylan on this show, we need a drink. We just did. What does inadvertently mean? Advert. Advertently. Inadvertently, I almost feel like means uh, like not on purpose or at it or. That's what we use it for, but I. It's such a strange word. Because an advert is what. Like, what do you mean that? What do you think that quota means? To meet a quote. Quota can be several things, and on Merriam-Webster, it was a weird definition. There's like four of them, but. It's either a minimum, a maximum, a set number of people who can enter the country, or something to do with uh, uh, affirmative action. We even drink for Dylan. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly. This one's for you, brother. Mine is sweet tea. That's uh, my unalcoholic drink of the week. Varsteiner. It is the beer of the week. Hans, do you think that we are the bodies? What's that from? I don't know, but I heard it one time. I thought it was funny. It's a, uh, I'm assuming it's German if it's not. It's I, definitely German. Okay. <laughs> Warsteiner, das Einzig war. Dunkel. Or Dunkel. No, I think U is the two uh, dots above the U. Is that German? Again, I don't know German. Yeah, I'm thinking this is a German beer. Uh, did I ever tell you about my experience smoking? No. I bought a cigarillo a long time ago. I was still with my parents. There was I was celebrating something. I went and got me this nice big old pizza just to eat by myself. Got me a cigarillo and something else. Sounds like my average Thursday night, but I see that's a celebration for you. <laughs> I'm just playing. I don't. Sleep. You simpleton. <laughs> and I was sitting down. And I smoked <clears throat> my cigarillo, whatever. Mm-hmm. Didn't think nothing. I woke up early morning hours, like hacking, and I almost vomited because it was like this flavor. Really? Yeah, it was the flavor of, like, burnt raisins and, like, fallen leaves on the ground. Wow. <laughs> I'm reliving it right now. Don't smoke, kids. Yeah, don't smoke. It's disgusting. Turn off the air for future. It's okay. We'll have a little bit of air in this one. Uh, this episode is brought to you by the word inadvertently. Shout out to yeah. Miriam Webster. Anytime you think you're ready. I know. There's you never, always something. You never really are. Well, hold on. This is what that's what makes us a bad podcast, though. Dude, I mean, every episode we live up to our name. At uh, least. I want to give a shout out to the six thumbs up that we got on the last video. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah, brother! Dilly dilly! Dilly dilly! For the record, he's drinking tea. I said that it's sweet tea. It's my unalcoholic. Did you say that? <laughs> it's my unalcoholic drink of the week. <clears throat> I said it right before you segued into your. I think that's just the narcissist. It was a perfect. I just want to listen though. to myself. Well. That just shows, shows that I don't think of you as a narcissist. I thought you perfectly segued off of my segue. I segued into you like in the street, and then you segued onto my segue. Have you Life ever is great, segue? dude. <laughs> no. No. Wait. Me either. No, they're called segues, but it's not spelled like segue. The people who made segue, S-E-G-W-A-Y, they saw the word segue, and they thought they had a vague understanding of what it meant. And then they invented a whole product, a multi-million dollar product idea based off of that simple understanding of the word segue. I think they did a pretty good job. I've never written one. I don't know. <laughs> I've never written one either. I meant getting the name. They did a good job. Yeah. Let's talk about names, I guess. <laughs> no, dude. I wanted to talk about Rambo. That's fine. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> I hope the outro. I hope the outro to this is me playing the Rambo theme song. It will be. It will. Or it could be the intro, and we could do some dramatic lighting, where there's just light on you, and that's what makes it dramatic. Well, I was trying to think, and I thought because I just watched Rambo, and I'm in the mood for justice, 
do I make the intro the theme song or do I make it what's up? <laughs> and I really was hoping that you would start. Yeah. But you didn't. I'm just chilling. I didn't know what to do with that. <laughs> improv. <laughs> I, think it's the generation I will gap. not start improv at level one. Michael Scott. Because he thought his improv skills would transfer. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think my improv skill credits are going to transfer. Yeah. And I will not start improv at level one. Oh, Where do you yeah. live in Colorado? Mountain town? <laughs> that reminds me. Uh, I was in California. And um, my buddy Mark, uh, he was wearing a sweatshirt that um, had... Wyoming on it, and mm-hmm. it, it was a Kanye Kanye West sweatshirt because he recorded his last album in Wyoming, and uh, so he's wearing this Kanye West Wyoming sweatshirt. And this this tourist walks past us, and he's clearly from Wyoming. He's like, "Bro, what part of Wyoming are you from?" Thinking, you know, I'm in California. I see a Wyoming hoodie. This guy must be from my little corner of the world, Wyoming, because there's no other reason he'd be wearing a Wyoming hoodie. So he sees the word Wyoming, he's like, bro, what part of Wyoming are you from? And my buddy Mark knows nothing about Wyoming, like any normal person. And so he he goes, so on the, on the sleeve of his sweatshirt, it says Jackson Hole, Wyoming, because that's where he recorded the album. So he goes, uh, Jackson Hole, he's like, bro, hell yeah, I'm like two hours from you. Like, first of all, how big is Wyoming that two hours is a hell yeah? <laughs> Instead hell yeah, of like, brother. Dude, out there though? <laughs> Your nearest mile uh, neighbor is like thirty miles away. Yeah, I guess that's I guess that's why he's like I'm only two hours. That's like two houses down. <laughs> Dude, I'm only like a block away from yeah. you, bro. We're basically block. neighbors. Yeah, but I just thought it was funny. And the guy didn't even get it at all. He still doesn't to this day. He just thought Wyoming was out there being represented. <laughs> represent. But what was your thing again? <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, it was Colorado. You were saying from the office. I wasn't even wanting to go into that. I just thought oh. of the office. <laughs> I've been to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Have you really? Mm-hmm. You want to you hear about a little trip I had? Wait, before we hear about the trip, how crazy is it that the one yeah the one place in Wyoming that I know exists 100%, like I can't tell you any other place in Wyoming, city, town, county, anything, but I know Jackson Hole exists. And the one place I know of its existence, you've been there? Well... To me, that's not a huge coincidence, and here's why. Is it the biggest Wyoming? Jackson Hole is kind of a popular destination. And in fact, it, I was, it was been several years since I've been there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but it might be the capital. Really? Do you know what it is? Uh, hey, Siri. <laughs> what is the capital of Wyoming? Cheyenne is the capital of Wyoming. Cheyenne, Wyoming. I should have known that. Mm-hmm. Anyways, Jackson Hole is kind of a, a bigger thing. We went... Uh, we went on a big trip. I think it, I think it was two weeks. We took a trip. Went through several states. We went up through um, Missouri, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, New, New Mexico. Oh, I was like, what? Texas, Oklahoma. So, yeah, dude, but, you can just literally scratch off half the country, uh, half the states. Well, Texas wasn't really a fair one because we only went through the top part. We went through Amarillo. And hey, that's, that's, I've been in Amarillo. Mm-hmm. It's pretty yellow, isn't it? it? I stayed there in the nighttime, so I don't know. Amarillo is the word for yellow. I thought it was like armadillo. That's armadillo. Amarillo, <laughs> because of the double L. You're right. You're right. That's yeah. how you, that's how real people would say it. Yeah. <laughs> but us here, American English. <laughs> yep. Uh, how does Amarillo not, not count as Texas, though? Now, because it's just that little top square part, and we didn't, uh, we stopped just to use the restroom. Did you Amarillo. touch Texas soil? Yes. Then you've been. And here's the deal: I never realized that there were places that made you pay to use the restroom. Really? So we just ended up peeing on the building. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect story. That's how it should be. That's how it should be, America. I've never had anywhere, even you would think in LA that you think you would think LA is the type of place that would do that, but I, I've never even encountered that there. Now, sure, you'll have to be like a customer or whatever. Isn't that the same thing as paying for the restroom, being a customer? Wait, did you mean pay for the restroom or be a customer? Be a customer. Oh, I've been in plenty of places like that. I've never peed in one, though, because it doesn't work. <laughs> I'll go somewhere else. I'll hold it. But um, Yeah, we didn't hold it. I had to really go. My dad was like, yeah, you're not going to do it by yourself. Yeah. 
Vigilante! No! Justice. Justice. I want to talk about Rambo. <clears throat> I've already... S- I've loved Rambo. Mm-hmm. What, 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 Going into this, I have to say I, I, I've i seen Rambo, but I was probably like six years old, so I'm, I'm going to be a little lost. Okay, first of all, Rambo is a series. I know. I've seen one of the Rambos. <laughs> probably like two. Dude, it's I'm got Rocky serious. Balboa in it. He's like... You can go to hell. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel like lovers of Rambo don't love Rocky, and lovers of Rocky don't like Rambo. That might say something about me, because I've seen Rocky, and I can remember it. So does that make me a lover of Rocky? No, just remembering something doesn't make you love it. You're right. Continue. Uh, Ever since a young wee lad watching Rambo, I've always been a fan. And uh, I can remember when they released Rambo 4, and we had to go, because Harrison wouldn't play it. Really? Yeah, they didn't play it. We had to go up, I think, to Springfield or somewhere above Branson, and I was the only kid there. Really? Yeah. It was gruesome. I remember my mom, like, freaking out, because in, like, the opening scene, (laughs) there's a minefield, and they force these... these, Oh, my God. It's in Burma or Myanmar or whatever, and they force these guys to run through this minefield, basically. They throw mines out in the rice pond or whatever, Mm -hmm. and some guys blow up and turn to blood mist. I remember I was like... And my mom was like, <laughs> couldn't. She was like getting grossed out. Uh, but I've always loved Rambo. It's about justice. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing about justice. Okay. People, I don't think justice always looks fair, but justice is fair. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if somebody murders somebody else, somebody wants to go lock them up in a cell, to me, that's not justice, just cut and dry. You know, like. If the guy doesn't care about getting locked away, he just he doesn't want to die. So justice is subjective. Justice is subjective in my book. Mm-hmm. Like, just like what I would perceive as good punishment for you is different than what you think would be something that's actually punishment. Mm-hmm. Like, some people are more afraid of death than being locked away. Some yeah. people are more afraid of being locked away than dying. Definitely. Definitely. So justice, if you're really wanting it to... Be to equal. reflect on the individual. Yeah, it's got it's got to be tailored to each one. Right. Anyways, I've always loved Rambo because he served and dealt justice subjectively to my belief of justice. Nice. Like this last one. Do you guys care about the plot? Really? Spoiler alert. Well, I I almost now want to watch it because you're telling me. So don't don't spoil everything. I will. I will. What do you think <clears throat> the plot is as of right now? I don't know. Somebody wrongs him and he goes to their country and. Kill like kills them uh, like, like goes berserk. On I them. will give a little bit. I'm not going to spoil everything that happens, but when you come to a movie like this, basically the little bit I will say is the whole movie. Uh, girl gets raped, and he basically avenges her. Okay, so what about the previous ones? Is he just a dispenser of justice for hire? No, I don't know what he. He's is. not a mercenary. Okay. Like in the first Rainbow, he's a. So it, each one has an act that he's going to avenge. Not e- yes, <clears throat> like Rambo First Blood mm-hmm. is where he is just wanting to pass through town to go visit his friend, and because uh, he's ex-military, mm-hmm. he's a veteran from Vietnam War, and he's just passing through this town and he looks kind of like a hobo, and so the sheriff or some kind of cop pulls him over and is like, mm, "I want you out of my town." He delivers him to the other side of the town, and the guy starts walking back into town because he just wants to get him a hot meal and mm-hmm. he'll be on his way. Long story short. Rambo kills half the policemen in this town, if not really? more. All these army men come in, the National Guard. Holy crap. Dude, it's a beautiful movie. I thought, for some reason, I thought he was, like, like for the law, but he's... In in subsequent... He is? <laughs> he gets re... He goes to prison. He, he's knocking rocks in a penitentiary, mm-hmm. uh, a work prison. What do they call those? They call it a work prison? Chain gang? Anyways, uh... I don't know. His, I've his, never been inside. <laughs> Do you want to talk about something? Look, I got a story to pass, <laughs> man. I'm a cultured man. I can tell. And uncultured at the same time. Kind of like a milk. Oh, that's funny. That was a good little science like joke. <laughs> or cheese. Fine cheese. Uh, 
So he's, he's like old sergeant in the military comes up to him. He's like, how would you like a way out of this place? Mm-hmm. And he, they basically, I think they, it's been a while since I watched it, but I think they pardon him if he agrees to go on this mission. So he ends up. He's not expected to survive from. It's like a Suicide Squad thing. He invented Suicide Squad. Have you seen Suicide Squad? No, well, there wasn't a squad. It was just him. He was the Suicide He's Squad. He's the clutch player in every MW2 game. That's awesome. <laughs> References. You get it. I don't get it. What's it from? Don't look at Clutch. Me. You ever clutch a game? Your whole team die and you got to win it for everybody? Yes, but what was the reference? MW2? Modern Warfare 2? Oh, I thought you were talking about like the NBA. You actually never played Search and Destroy. No, I didn't have an Xbox or you? PlayStation until I was like you get it. 40 years old. When you said MW something, I thought you were talking about the the NWNBA. WNW, NW, NW, WNBA. Or NWBA. Okay, this is pointless. North Women's American Basketball. Or National. Why do you know that? I said North. <laughs> what do you mean? Why do I know that? National Women's Basketball Association. So NWBA. In what? <laughs> National. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, he gets pardoned or whatever. Okay. And then the third one, I think he's in Russia. Or the third one is in Thailand or somewhere. It's kind of murky right now. It's been a while since I've Dude, watched those. I want to stop this and go watch them right now. No, it's okay. No, we no, finished. No. D- tonight, you want to watch them? Maybe. Bro, I need a promise. <laughs> Dude, don't make me promise in front of okay, any potential people. <laughs> Of those fifty six, our fifty seven. I never finished fifty seventh subscriber. I don't know who you are, but literally we have fifty seven. I know that's why I said shout out because I, I want to say shout out to fifty eight for the but that we don't have yet. Yeah, like shout uh, out to you for making it fifty eight. And they click sub. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to number fifty eight. Uh, uh, DM us if you want your actual name said. <laughs> Listen, <price. laughs> not really. No money prizes. No money. We're poor. Wait, no, Dave Chappelle taught us. me poor is a mindset. I what we are is broke. I need to watch this. Dude, I laughed so hard. Did I tell you? Did you watch? We talked about it, but I didn't watch it. Only the worst kind of white people like that. Mm-hmm. That's the article I read. Yeah, no, they're right. You I'm gone. Gu- right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was missing, bro. <laughs> I love Sable, but she doesn't talk to me like that. Dude. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Are you my dom? Oh my god. <laughs> Cut the episode. I'm done. <laughs> okay, let me get back to this. You just remind me of several things I want to talk about. So I remember starting off saying, like, I want to shout out to the six people who viewed and liked the yeah, last one. Thank you. I guys. want to go back and talk about some of the people who have come up to me to talk about this. Okay. Uh, Rambo. Anyways, <laughs> Is girl. This all related to Rambo? <laughs> no, but oh, they made me think Rambo about Rambo. Now. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> Listen. Okay. That's what we're all doing. I've mentioned it in probably two different podcasts that I'm okay with killing if it's justice. <laughs> the way you're saying it not, doesn't sound not, great, but not yeah. murder. Okay. Totally against murder. What I mean is like uh justified killings. Mm-hmm. Like You mean vigilante killings or law? No. I mean I don't know. Here's what's weird. Never mind, I won't talk about it. Okay. Uh because justice is so subjective, you can't just go having anyone going out to serve justice. Okay. But everything that I've seen Rambo do, He's, I'm like, hell yeah, yeah. that's justice. <laughs> you go rape a girl and you steal and you get her addicted to drugs and you cut on her face. Yeah, you deserve to have your face cut in half. Yeah. Dude, Amen. there are some parts to that. Anyways, I love this movie because it's all just about... He's fighting back for his daughter. Mm -hmm. It's not his daughter, but he's fighting for this girl. Okay. As soon as I leave the movie theater and I look up reviews for it, it's all just talking about how it's it's the it's the Trump era fan base that loves this movie, Mm -hmm. and it's uh, it's about xenophobia, and it's basically just a saw movie where the guy hates Mexicans and it makes Mexico look like full of sex. Or pedophiles and all kinds of stuff. And look, I've been to Mexico, not the heart of Mexico. Mm-hmm. It's 
yeah, I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave my tour. I mean, the Mexicans were telling me, yeah, I wouldn't travel to that part right. of Mexico. And there's parts of America that I would refuse oh, yeah. to go to. I, it has nothing I to do with who lives there. In downtown uh, St. Louis, <laughs> like it's still one of my favorite stories to tell. So I know what you're saying. Look, like, yeah, there's parts of everywhere. You wouldn't catch me going into any place where the rats outnumber the people. Yeah. And yeah. I know it, rats probably outnumber. Right. But look, get over it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would not go to any place where the crime is ridiculous for my chances of dying by a gunshot or astronomically high. Where like the one town. Included in America is why America has the highest gun rate. Yeah. You take away these towns and all of a sudden, where's You're the crime? Chicago? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out so, to Lindy City. <laughs> shootout. I mean. <laughs> Look. Dude, and that's so, why you don't read reviews, bro. It's like. Because. Hold on. Blaze your own trail. Yeah. I want to talk about how critics are so out of touch. Mm-hmm. How it's only the. It's subjective, first of all. That's why a critic's job is kind of weird. No, I want to talk get... about how when you go on Rotten Tomatoes, mm-hmm. and we all we all already don't even really trust Rotten Tomatoes, but yeah. how the critic's score is always opposite of what the audience wants. Yeah. That's how you know they don't There's even know. From the people. There's a disconnect. You get back in touch with your people. Real people, they don't watch Rambo and think, oh, he hates Mexicans. They watch it and go, this person, regardless of color, raped another person he got killed for it hell yeah that's justice Mm -hmm. i didn't watch it look the only white person in that whole movie was rambo everyone else was mexican he didn't kill every mexican Mm -hmm. that's so when i went down to the yucatan the guy was like yeah don't travel up there don't go to mexico are you telling me that guy's xenophobic probably not I would assume he's just like any other tour guide. Like He's like any other person and doesn't care what the race you are. He just says, that particular part of this country is kind of dangerous. Don't go there. Yeah, like if they did tours of downtown Chicago. He said, don't go to Mexico Coast. City. Don't set They'd foot in Mexico say, City. Don't go in downtown. You know? Well, you know, you'll die. And it does matter about race as far as when they're like, hey, if you're white, don't go there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't let you leave. Yeah. So, no. When I watched that movie, I didn't think, oh, yeah, he's killing the brown people. I was thinking, yeah, he's killing bad guys. Mm-hmm. I don't care who the bad guys are. I just know what the bad guys did. But I will tell you two gripes I had with that movie. Okay. Let's hear them. One, I just realized you want to watch this, so. Yeah. Here's what I will say. <laughs> Here's what I will say with try, trying to give anything away. Okay. I don't like how this one guy. I will say is the antagonist somehow has this tactical training because there's a few moments in the movie where you're like, would he really know how to do that? Mm-hmm. Come on. He's not come from a... He pushes whores. He's not going to be... Mm. And, the, and the other thing, honestly, I can't even remember it right now because the movie was so good. I also read another thing that was like, it's a 90 minute movie and the 89 minutes of it drag on. It's like, wow. I was sad at how short it was. Yeah. That's one thing I hate, short movies. Dude, I was if in the... I see a four-hour movie, I'm like, that's a night in. Yeah. Like, I'm clicking that. I love long movies. I wish they'd make a comeback. Like, I'll sit in the... I would have sat through hours. a four-hour long Rambo. Yeah. I would have. I've loved Rambo. I've always loved it. I wouldn't care what color he was. I just... I hate the fact that people bring in race when there's regular people Dude, watching it don't care. That's why you don't... Don't read the reviews. Like, I didn't want to. I used I... to religiously, like, go on Rotten Tomatoes and be like, is this movie worth seeing? And then I'm like... Hold on. This person could be... Because compl- people have different tastes. That's why to be a real critic, you need to be unbiased. Well, but here's, nobody can be unbiased. Here's where the Electoral College matters. When you have <laughs> the critics from big towns writing these pieces, and they have such a huge disconnect from the people out in most of America, mm-hmm. when the 95% of the audience score, or 95% of the audience says it's a thumbs up, and 30% of the critics... Or and it's got a thirty percent rating for the critics. There's a disconnect. The critics rating it aren't rating it. They're, I mean, they're they're giving maybe their own opinion, which I doubt it. They're just shills. They're just mm-hmm. putting forth their ideology, like oh, it's xenophobia, or maybe it's just a good guy doing a good work. You know what I mean? <sighs> Jesus Christ. So, anyways, the electoral college matters. Yeah. So you don't have these thirty percent. Who outnumber, like, I, I don't, I didn't look into it, but it was like, I saw this one, this one city had more than half the population of America. Mm-hmm. 
the electoral college makes that one city not dictate what all of America does. It's based on representation of like how many people are in that state. Most state, I think every state has two representatives. Mm. I think there's an exception or two, but every like state has two representatives. Okay. And the electoral college are those two representatives from each state vote. Oh, really? Yeah. I think you just explained the electoral college to me for the first time. I can't remember if every state has two representatives or not, but there's a few that have more. No, a few that have one. Oh, but it it is, it's so that. Hawaii probably has one. It's so that the five cities in America that have most of the population don't tell the farmers, this is the crops you can't grow because that will, they don't know how the life is all across America. So Mm -hmm. they can't make rules for everybody across America because they don't know what it's like. Just like I can't make rules for what New York can like, I don't know what it's like. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna try to make rules for it. And people living on the border aren't making rules for the people in New York City, and the New York City's not making rules for people on the border. It's all equal representation, right? I don't know how I got to that. <laughs> Me either. But I'm just saying, Rambo. Reading audience scores or reviews, yeah, lets me know why we need certain things in life. So yeah. the critics don't understand what people want. It's just like when Captain Marvel had like a hu- a great critic rating. I still haven't seen and a 30% that audience movie. score. Yeah. It might have been great. I might have loved the movie, but I will never trust a critic rating ever because they're getting if they give a bad rating to a movie that they're supposed to give a good rating to, like cuz they're supposed to based on it's all a push, right? Yeah, it, whoever they're writing for wants them to be a certain way because right. their money is coming from people who want things to be a certain want way. Their movie to look a certain way. Yeah, we need less white. Be- you know, what? let me talk about another review that I read. Okay. Dark Crystal: Age of Resistance. I want to talk about that because I finally finished it. Okay. I have a few problems with it. Okay. Okay. The first article when I looked up that thing, and it was a review, and it said, "Dark Crystal: Age of Resistance spoke about climate change." Are you f- kidding me? Did it? Can you not have a movie just about something and not have to have a political message? Right. I think they're referring to climate change in that movie as the darkening. But isn't it in the first one? They oh. don't describe it as the darkening, mm-hmm. but there was a blight, a blight across the land that mm-hmm. created it, and it's barren and everything like that. Could it not just be lore? Can it not just be a, t- a good old-fashioned evils crushing the land? Mm-hmm. What the f***? When I watched that, maybe not once did I see a thing about climate change. Right. I think that's the thing about art, though. It's it For it to be art, it has to be subjective to the viewer. People yeah. can look and see. But don't f- tell me right, don't say and publish canon. that for all of the world to see right. that it's... Don't say your fan fiction is canon. You know, Shout out to all the nerds out there. <laughs> don't tell about. me that this is what the movie is. Right. Say tell me you what you it. think it is. Because that's great. That's what art is. That's why we exist as creatures, as humans, is to create. Uh, that's my belief in some way. Uh, but it has to be subjective. Uh, it has to be. It, it's what you get out of I'm it. I'm fine with that. Interpret anything mm-hmm. you want. And also, it's the artist's interpretation, which a lot of the times you'll never know because they just won't state it. They'll just present it for what it is. Because I think sometimes they didn't have the... They don't have one. They just want to make something cool. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> when I read that, I thought, what the... F-? <laughs> this world's so... <laughs> Can you delete that too? This bleak. world is so stupid. Yeah. No, it had nothing to do with it. Let me get to my complaints real quick. Okay. <laughs> You're never going to watch it, right? Probably not. Maybe in 30 Probably years. Probably not you either. I told you there, there are some inconsistencies that I thought. But as the series progressed, I was like, no, I was probably just wrong. No, I was very much right. Mm. And in fact, after the last episode, there's 10. After that, I immediately started the movie from 1982. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't start it back then. I started it <laughs> yesterday. When you finished the series. Yeah. And uh, in the first, like minute of the movie there's a dialogue a narrator and everything he just described basically kind of refutes the whole plot of the series really the series suggests that these beings have basically been in rule for like two a a thousand years already and then that's kind of when things start going sour the skexies the skexies there were these supernatural beings called the ursex or whatever 
and they're banished from their home world and they're there on this planet Thra. Not that anyone cares about this, but I just need to express it. Is is that word? Is that Skeksis backwards? No, uh, that would be cool. Skeksis they... comes from Urskex because when Skex. when these Ur that's the common Urskex or Ursex. I don't remember how it's spelled. Oh, I wasn't I wasn't condoning your your speech. I was finding the what linked them the word Skex or sex or whatever. You're, you're about to see. You're about to see. I'm okay. about to explain it. There's one these eighteen beings. Okay, and. They're kind of like an enlightened race, but these eighteen were cast out from their planet because they had like impure thoughts. Mm. They, their true they light wasn't showing. Yeah, they were flawed, and they were banished until they could get rid of their flawed, um, whatever. So they can go back though. They could, if they hadn't, but fucked up. <laughs> anyways, they got. It was like a thousand years mm-hmm. that they're on this planet, and um, they get tired of not being home, and they basically cracked this crystal and as the crystal cracked it separated them each 18 into two beings and that's where the skeksis come from and that's where like the mystics the urus oh come from yeah the the skeksis are half of ur skeks ur ur and the uru are the ur of ur sex ur skeks Mm. anyways in the show though it's like they were kind of watching over the crystal for a thousand years, and then the next one thousand years are when the Skeksis are being like it's called like the, the darkening is taking over and everything's mm, bad. So it's corruption. basically two thousand years of of the Skeksis being there. And in the movie, it immediately says the Skeksis have ruled for a thousand years, and it's refuting everything because it's talking about them coming and immediately doing these acts. So there's all of a sudden we've lost a thousand years. Hmm. The one of the guys who died in the last episode of the show is in this movie, which and, is before the show, which is supposed to take place afterwards. So the guy dies in the series, and then later down on the road, which is set before the show, yeah, yeah is the movie, yeah, and the guy's alive. Hmm. Now it's possible there just so happened to be a second of the eighteen that's named General. But they're pretty... I mean, it was time of the Muppets, the, mm-hmm. the puppets or whatever. They didn't come up... There was, like, the Chamberlain, like, the Scroll Keeper, like, the Scientist Guy. So they each had a unique name. They yeah. They wouldn't be too... And, the, and they all had a title. And this one guy's name was... He was the General. And in, like, the opening scene, they're calling him the General. And in the ending scene of the series... The general gets killed by Chamberlain. I misinterpreted it. I thought, I thought the series came. The series first. is t- well. The series was made afterwards, but it takes place before. First. It's a prequel. So the guy dies in the series, the prequel. Yeah, and somehow and he's, he's alive, alive later on. That's why it's really weird. Never mind. I didn't understand it right. So yeah, there's inconsistencies there. Mm-hmm. There's so inconsistencies that everywhere. To me like, like this was some fan fiction that they turned into a movie without like he didn't fully understand the the plot because how could if they were like I guess the guy's dead the creator David Henson Jim Henson Jim Henson sorry David I'm pretty sure he's dead yeah so they couldn't have consulted him but is he the only one who knows his lore or there's people like you who just literally knew that so I mean everything I know is guy? from the movie so did they even watch the movie how does that happen here's if the, the thing. first line of the movie Tells you what you Yeah, he's describing everything. He's like, for a thousand years. And that's what's another thing. Could there be a lost in translation thing going on? Like, is he saying for two thousand years? <laughs> like, and it just sounds like a thousand years? <laughs> Don't think so. Okay. Had to um, check. So at first, in the very first episode, I didn't like the series. Mm-hmm. And then I watched more and I was like, you know what? I like this. I can dig it. And then at the end of the show, there's a battle. And I'm like... Now, this is where it's starting to look stupid. Mm. Of course, people like my dad are like, no, the whole thing was stupid, you idiot. As soon as the last shout episode... Out. Yeah, shout out, Pops. I love you. Please bleep Me out too. every curse word. <laughs> I don't know what's with this dark beer. The Germans just cuss all the time, don't they? Bro, this tea... Keeping you pure. <laughs> pure. Uh, it's it actually about? empty. I need a refill soon, but... We'll take a break in a minute, because okay. I'm going to get you another beer. Okay. Last episode... As soon as it ends, I'm kind of on a dark crystal high because mm-hmm. I love the dark crystal as a kid. I already said it. I get 
Yeah, I can feel it in my chest. <clears throat> you cut out my heart, it's a crystal. <laughs> uh, I immediately start the, the, sh- the movie, and I'm like, this fucking movie is better than this show immediately. And it has nothing to do... One thing I loved... Uh, I, wa- I tried to watch both, didn't get through either. But one thing I loved in favor of the movie... Was like the old look, like the the aesthetic. old look. I, I love, love that. that. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> that, which I'm sure that's not intended because when it was made, that was just a standard. But appreciating it now, I love that old look. So. Well, I think it adds to its favor, not because I just like the way it looks old, but right. <clears throat> what the hell was I saying? It should look old it, because it's it set in fits. A, yeah, it fits with the type of style that we're going to do. Like, right. when you come, and you want to give me they HD... Change the style. Yeah, you want to give me HD puppets? Mm-hmm. It doesn't look as good. Right. And the it puppeteering looks, is not as good. Yeah. They want the CGI stuff, too. You know what they did in the movie? Mm. There's a lot of shots where they're looking away, far away, and it looks like a real human running. Right. Because they use a real human running. That is awesome. Yeah. In the movie, they didn't no, use I real people. That. We're losing that or, about filmmaking. Not the like, movie. In the this, stuff you had to do to get certain things. Yeah, but. well, now in the series, anytime you, they took a faraway shot, it would be CGI, mm-hmm. and it looked really bad. The CGI in that movie is pretty bad. Yeah. Anytime there's a CGI moment, you know. Movie or show? The show. Okay, because did they have a CGI back then? <laughs> I'm sure they did, but it was In like, a different way. But yeah. they made it so much better. I will say there's several shots in the series that looked really good. Every mm-hmm. time I went to a landscape shot, it was beautiful. Yeah. Like, they did really good on that, but... The puppets didn't look as good, Mm -hmm. and that's what they were relying on. Mm -hmm. I would have appreciated like a live action, or if they try to do something like Avatar, right? Instead of trying to trying to honor the first one, but butchering. Yeah, you can you can honor something, but keep the keep the lore by honoring it. Yeah, but you're not honoring it. Action would have been cool. That would have been to watch. It'd been really good. Cartoon or something like animated, but I I don't like the puppet style, but. Personal thing. I'm not. I don't personally like Muppets or puppets either. I mean, I have said that I like some of the puppet stuff Mm -hmm. before, but it wasn't like a. I didn't like Dark Crystal because it was puppets. Mm -hmm. I liked Dark Crystal because of the tones. Now I will say, the series does get really dark. There are certain moments. There's a Skeksy that beats somebody to death, <laughs> and blood, he bludgeons him. Okay, and then he uses his body to reanimate another corpse, and then like he fuses them together. Wow! Like it's dark. The dark crystal. It's almost yeah. like the. And in the in the movie, there are some dark aspects to it. Mm-hmm. It was just a good movie, but I don't know. The series fell short, mm-hmm. and I know people are gonna say, "Oh, it's because you're nostalgia for the movie." Look. <clears throat> I mean, you can say whatever you want to say. Well, they're right, but... But they did it better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Of course, you can never... Never secede your successor. Or your predecessor. <laughs> well, I guess you can. You can success, success him. They, oh, and another thing. When they go to talk, when they move them up its mouth... Right. They CGI their tongues to oh. flip. Oh. And every time they laugh, they're like... Ah, ha, 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 ha. Oh. And it's like... That's so unnecessary. Yeah. If you're making the puppets because you want to connect with the people who like the movie. Don't CGI the puppets. Don't CGI the puppets. Why don't Leave you them. just recreate it like they did back then if you really want to honor the movie? Yeah, film it on a, if on you a, are a not, Kia flip <laughs> If you're not so worried about if they're going to be completely puppets, then why do puppets at all? I would love if they came out with like a grainy movie like that today. It looks good. It, it does. honestly does. I love it. I think it's something about the film and maybe... Look, I don't know enough about movies yet to know that, but maybe maybe we don't shoot on film anymore. I don't know, but it looks so cool. Well, it's also just like digital noise because the editing stuff back then nowhere near advanced. It's just See, I don't know any of that, but it looks great. But I will say, Brendan probably is like, "What are you talking about? I'm a professional video editor." He's, He's like, "Why don't you just ask sense. me?" <laughs> Look, I did. I really like the music from the series. Mm-hmm. I love the soundtrack from the movie. A lot of things were great, but the lore was out of whack, dude. It just didn't make sense. That's so weird to me that they've messed up the one fundamental thing they shouldn't have. Like, the tongues are whatever, you know, you added something. But you shouldn't mess up what you're basing it on. It was just... They I didn't, like how we didn't talked about not listening to critics, and here we are, criticizing. We're them. the audience score, though. Right. No one paying us. Right, true. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh... We're the wrong skin color to be paid for right oh now. God. You'll take a break. Wrong genitalia you. as well. <laughs> oh, you're not finished with that one. Chug it. All 
Break. Wait, you bringing me one? Uh, why don't, oh. I did talk about the one thing I really wanted to talk about, and that was, that was the Dark Crystal. Uh, (laughs) That was really on my mind. I was like, I can't wait to tell Daniel about that. I'm glad you told me. I wish, when I watched the movie, it felt like Star Wars, and I was like, I can f*** with this. Bleep. (laughs) 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 But, uh, was that your dolphin? (laughs) Trying. Uh... I, it lost me along the way. Somewhere in that lady's temple where she's got the solar system. The orrery. Yeah, somewhere around there. I stopped watching. I was like, uh, blah, blah, blah. But I liked the way it looked. And felt up until then. It, it was it's just a really good... They, they did a... The, the, the scenes and the shooting of it, I think, had more skill. Like they, they told to. the story better. It had to because they didn't have all the things we have now to rely on. And I think we're screwed because of exactly. those things. We definitely are, like from an evolutionary standpoint, for sure. Um, because you don't want self reliance. You you don't want reliance. You know what I mean? You don't want to be able to rely on to a certain degree. You know what I'm saying? Because it pushes innovation. What are you? You're saying not relying on things that are already there? No. So like not. In, What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> no, dude. Like, you don't want to be able to rely on your $1,000, uh, like, editing program to fix your mistake if you fi- if you make a mistake in filming. Because you want to do it so well the first time, there's no reason. Let me tell you something it. that you just reminded me of. Okay, but hold on. Did it make sense what I said? Now. Okay. <laughs> when you go back and watch this clip. He said three beers. I've only had two cups of sweet tea. That's some strong tea, though, bro. Listen, you know what pisses me off? Uh, Speaking of not relying on something else to do your work for you and correct your mistakes, I remember in school, remember, math honors. He got honors throughout math. I was trying to ask my I teacher. I you said it on that first episode. I received honors throughout math. <laughs> <laughs> you sly motherfucker. Bleep. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Dude, side shoot. I remember the first time I used to say Father Mucker all the time. Did you on purpose? Father Mucker, yeah. Oh, okay. Because I didn't want to say. Okay. I want to say uh, Father Mucker. <laughs> but one time in the presence that I think I thought my parents could hear, I said, I said Father Mucker, but it was actually. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, God. It didn't come out the way I wanted it to. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> How do you explain that to your mom? Like, no, I was trying to say He's like, Father Mucker. <laughs> You probably sounded like a. <laughs> you damn me then! Oh, the power of Christ compels you! Is that from The Exorcist? Uh, I think the wordage. Did you use the right exercise in your post? I don't think so. Okay. I, I think like... it's actually supposed to be said excise. The demon is supposed to be excised. Why? I think that's how it's said. I think that's the word I was supposed to use. No. No, you exercise a demon, but with an O. Right? Can we look at excise? <laughs> for those not watching, I'm Daniel is currently looking up a word for me. Excise. <clears throat> this episode could be brought to you by Audible. If they would ever answer my emails. <laughs> um, Audible has over two audiobooks that so you can choose from. <laughs> They do have more than two. So what I said wasn't a lie. Uh, excise. A tax levied on certain goods and commodities produced or sold within a country and on licenses granted for certain activities. In a sentence, it says excise taxes on cigarettes. Excise? Let's hear it. Excise. Excise. Is that the only definition? The second definition as a verb. That was a noun. The verb. Excise. Excise is to charge excise on goods. Excised goods. I could be a voice actor. Is that the only other definition? (laughs) Um, The origin is Latin. So there's no other definitions. Hold on. There's excise to verb. Excise, third person present. Excises, past tense. Excised, past particle. Excised. Okay, the definition is cut out surgically. 
Though you're close. Just look up exercise a demon. See if that's a phrase. Okay. It's exercise with an O, but... No, I know... I know now that the way I wrote it makes it sound like I'm about to put them on a leash and walk them. No. no. Because to ex- exercise something is to purge it. I'm sure it has roots in excise, obviously. Or maybe excise has roots no, in excise. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm saying I realize the way I spelt it already let sounds get, like I'm going to go... This- point across to you what i just now looked up excise demon brought up no results the only result it brought up was exercise versus exorcise with an yes o. and i get what you exactly you're saying i'm not disagreeing anymore oh. i'm saying the way i spelt it was like you want to go walk your dog yes that is that's why i said did you use the right exercise? yes that's now what i am admitting <laughs> okay but i don't I don't like to edit my posts, so it's probably uh, going to stay no, that way. No, it's fine. Keep it. Like, it didn't even bother me. I still hit Oh, it bothered me because after I typed it and po- posted it, I'm like, Bro, I wonder if this is the right usage. If you think I'm sitting there, like, Good thing I didn't choose excise. Analyzing your Facebook post, like, did he spell anything wrong? You're 100% Because you right. are. <laughs> That's what I do. Do I care, though? No, yes. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, where the fuck did this come from? <laughs> Too excited. You said, I asked. <laughs> Where, oh, but how did we get to this? What were we talking about? That's what researchers who've studied the history of mankind have been saying for years. How did we get to this? <laughs> Look at me. Why am I like this? That's what uh, psychologists have been thinking for years. <laughs> hey, um, so we talked about Dark Crystal. That was the huge issue on my mm-hmm. brain. Right. And I uh, don't have anything else. Dude, <laughs> do I have something for you? <laughs> Dude, this is... I didn't plan this for the podcast. I was on Facebook. Of all places. <laughs> I'm always on that Have app. you seen the ads for book? No. Dude, two bleeps. Um, no. <laughs> Probably. Oh, my God. It's always with that site. Okay. <laughs> It's always with the Facebook. With the Facebooks and the Twitters. Kids on their Twitter. People doing the little birdie calls, the tweet tweets. The tweet on Facebook. (laughs) But that'll be like, I need a YouTube how to tweet on Facebook, man. (laughs) Dude, my dad had a key fob. I'm in the car with you, and he's like, he's like, he's like, I saw a YouTube on. (laughs) You saw what? This computer can fit a whole YouTube's worth of videos on it. Look, my mom just got a new car. Okay. Uh, uh, some kind of car. What'd you get? I don't know. It's but a Ford. It's some kind of car. turbocharged? I don't know. I can still smoke her. <laughs> smoke her? You hardly know her. My car is actually in the shop. I'd be running next to her. But man, give you some spinach in your Dude, Naruto give me run. Time, give me enough time to get there. Oh my god, give me a big enough head start. Like three days, <laughs> I'll be her any given three days of the week. <laughs> if she waits, I'll be sitting on the sideline. That was good. Why are we on Audible? Audible, answer my emails. Audible. Answer my friend's emails. Yeah. Uh and she has a key fob. Mm-hmm. And I called my dad this morning, and they were talking. No, no. I called him yesterday, and they are talking about trying to get the key out of the key fob. And I'm like, there's a little button. You just slide it over and pull your key out. He's like, oh, well, we're just going to YouTube it. I'm like, you don't have to f-ing YouTube it. I'm telling you exactly how to do That's it. Hilarious and, he, how- and he's like, he's like, well, I don't want to mess something up. I'm like, how are you going to mess it up? There's one button. You yeah. just slide it over. My mom couldn't figure it out. Oh. Huh. I couldn't figure it out. Today, my dad's like, oh, yeah, we YouTube and guess what? You just slide that button over and pull it out. I'm like, I told you. He's like, well, I, I, I'm sorry we didn't do it your way. I'm like, it's not my way. <laughs> it is the way. What did they tell you to do differently than I said? And he was like, well, I, I needed a visual. I'm like, it's a button. It goes one direction. You pull a key out after going one direction. There's two steps. Slide. Pull. <laughs> He he was thinking I was describing how to make uh, granite gravity. in how to discover gravity. <laughs> yeah, thank God Newton discovered. We'd be still on the ceiling, wouldn't dude, we? Dude, until he discovered it, we lived a freaking awesome <laughs> life. Though <laughs> we were like, this world can all fit a whole full room. 
<laughs> that rings. That story rings two things to mind. Number one, when you start, I love my parents. There's, I love them too. But that They're aggravated mine. me to no end. He's like, "Oh, we're just gonna YouTube it," and then he's like, and he even said, "He's like, no, don't be mad." But we YouTube right. it. We YouTube it, and we got the key out. Two and he's things. like, well, "I'm sorry, we didn't do it your way." I'm like, <laughs> my mind is melting. <laughs> Two things. When you first said key fob, I thought you meant it was electric. Like, it doesn't have a... I thought by fob, you meant, like, it's just a little thing when you get in your car. Like, you have. I think Sable's messaging me. I don't think she's telling me to be quiet. But we're recording. I definitely have a message. She definitely did message me. Did she say be quiet? No, I don't know. Oh, she said we're being very loud. Let's get her some earmuffs. Okay. Make a note to get Sable some earmuffs. Does she actually have some? Yes. This episode could be brought to you by Audible. <laughs> they would get back to us and also have more than two books on their on their site. Are you done? Yeah. Uh, I was just filling in the... You thought a key fob was... Uh, like what you have. And so I was like, what do you mean get the key? It was I have funny. a key in my fob. Really? Yeah. Oh, there's an actual key in it. Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have a key. I don't have a key ignition. It's a, key, it's a, just a push button. But to get in my car, I have a, a key, a key entry. Oh, so there's a key inside the little electronic thing that I thought was electronic my whole life. It is electronic. Well, I think it's done by inductance. I'm not really sure how it works, but I do know that they make these little metal boxes. I think she wants us to shut up. Uh, like in the podcast? I think she wants us to end it. I will talk in my normal tones. Okay. I'll try to talk in mine. Okay. <laughs> but dude, it's so much fun. Uh, anyways. <laughs> the second thing it brought to mind, I think I was still talking. Probably. Uh, so I, it was funnier in my mind because I thought they were trying to get a key out of something that didn't have a key. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the second thing it brought to mind was how hilarious it is that I think boomers, most boomers or some boomers are way more reliant on like technology than, than most kids. Like I don't watch a YouTube on every, but it's like hilarious because they figured out what YouTube was and how they could use it and stuff. And then they started just like relying on it for everything. I guarantee you right now. Because I've heard your parents say a lot of things about the YouTubes. They're like, I watched, and your mom's always watching these Indian cooking videos on the YouTubes, like how they make the big food for the village. Does she? She's always talking about it. <laughs> always to you. I'm just picking it up residual. Like, look, my dad right now is probably listening to this, trying to figure out how to turn up the <laughs> the brightness so he can hear you. <laughs> I'm just joking. Look, oh, if you're watching. If you're not watching, I was not joking. <laughs> Trying to explain to my dad how to use Facebook too. The Facebook. He'll be like, Ben, I sent you a message. I'm like, No, you didn't. And then it'll come to find out he posted it on this <laughs> timeline. Or he'll try to uh, comment on one of my posts. It'll be a message. And I'm like, Dad, you didn't comment he on my post. He just posted it somewhere on Facebook. He will have posted it to like the main page of them or something. Or he's like, or he, <laughs> he's like in, the, in the Walmart page, just posted to you. And he'll get like one of those. He he got sent a friend request from Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Count for how the real. And he's like, Ben, that's kind of creepy because he, my dad hates Freddy Krueger. Like that's the oh, only thing my dad's ever hilarious. been scared of. And I'm like, Dad, it's just like a fake thing. It's hold a, on, was it? Uh, hey, well, even if it's not, well, hold on, because my worry. The one thing your dad is afraid of happened to send him a friend request. That sounds like destiny to me. Look, there are one out of five chances. That some, it could have been it, or Jason Voorhees. It could have been. I don't think it's a coincidence at all. You're saying there's only five scary things in the world that I can think of that are. It could have been big hairy spider. It could have been heights. <laughs> heights is <laughs> your request. <laughs> You're saying people only fear the five main horror villains. No, I think people recognize the five main. <laughs> it could have been crippling depression. <laughs> Sent you a friend request. Yeah, and then as you enough. as you go to approve, it denies itself. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
No, trying to explain Facebook to him. And um, <laughs> trying to tell my dad, like, Dad, you realize I'm on YouTube all the time. He'll he'll try to tell me how great YouTube is. He's mm-hmm. like, yeah, you can look up anything. You you want to know? Saying, they figured and, out. And, and I'm like, like, Dad, <laughs> I watch YouTube every single day of my life. Yeah. I don't have cable. <laughs> you do realize I live off YouTube, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the antiquated boomer versus the aggravated zoomer. <laughs> <laughs> look, and then uh, all the all the old people on our on our. I'm sorry. All the older people yes. on our like friends list are the ones always posting right. like the whole thing. Like if you don't if you don't post this as your status, they will take. They're your... gonna steal your f- kids if you don't post this on your wall. <laughs> My dad hears that. I do not give you permission to post this. <laughs> My dad hears that runs over here. And he's like, "Kid, are you okay?" <laughs> <laughs> But no, my dad will be like, yeah, I got rid of my Facebook because I didn't want to get hacked. I'm like, dad, just by having a phone, <laughs> just by using your contact, your calendar, your email, you've given them access to it all. Well, hold on. That brings to mind like the, the face app thing. Do you remember when that was going on? Uh-huh. Changing your, your people, pictures. People were sh- sharing this thing. Like if you, if you took a picture on that app or if you even downloaded it, you gave them permission to change your and use it for Russian ads. I'm like... You realize when you signed up for Facebook and MySpace 14 years ago in the 13th century, you gave them permission to do that by not reading the terms and conditions, clicking I agree and clicking sign up. Here's the deal. They already have you. Here's they can the deal. Still pick you up from a a satellite 60,000 kilometers in the air. They can still pick out your individual. I don't know if it's that far. 4,000 people. Hey, look. I saw this 3D photo on Facebook <laughs> that was of China uh, from some satellite, or it was a square in China, or it was chicago or something like that anyway it was a 3d image but it was from a satellite you could see every part you could zoom in to oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you you could travel the city from look the if we can see other galaxies it wasn't a 3d picture on facebook it was a link to a thing a file blah, blah, blah. hey um speaking of you uh, did i tell you about the whole apple and google thing that came out recently <clears throat> yeah i think so they record you the, yeah i mean which how, how does your phone know that you're about to say hey siri it's, know, it's, it's always listening. It's always listening. It's the same thing with my f- face unlock. I think it's always taking pictures or it's always like scanning because because you age. Yeah. Well, you also it needs to know when you're looking at. Oh it. yeah. Because yeah. it's a retina or so, I don't know something, but yeah. It's even to use your call app. It you have to give it access to your contacts and other things yeah. and you, access to your your microphone. I think people, especially boomers, are more afraid of this whole idea, but. They no longer live in the age where there's not computers or there's right. not as much there's surveillance. No Everything you grid. do now. Yeah. And I mean, what surprises me is my dad will tell me a story about how a hacker. Did you know there's a hacker and a cracker? A hacker is actually a beneficial hacker and a cracker is a malicious hacker. I don't know. That sounds a little politically charged. It does. <laughs> but that's that's the true like definitions. Right. I didn't know that. You'll probably just find Urban Dictionary if you type in cracker. Or but, you'll find some saltines. Come on, bro. <laughs> Come on, bro. Why is saltines like the number one cracker? It's disgusting. I couldn't think of uh, Ritz, but now I can. If you give me thirteen favorite. seconds, I would have said. It. Or it could be some delicious Ritz, bro. There it goes. From now on, give yourself thirteen seconds to answer any question. Dude, this is gonna can be you... a long podcast. <laughs> it already is. It's been about nothing of substance. Dude, I think that's what this episode embodies. Like. Oh, this my is. Story. <laughs> you guys remember what my story was? <laughs> I remember what it was going to be, but holy. <laughs> this is how I feel every week. <laughs> Can we talk about how. Oh my god, I was going to tell this story about this Facebook thing I saw, and then we. <laughs> Oh my god, and I'm not even, I'm literally drinking sweet tea. (laughs) Dude, that sugar is crazy now. Anyway, oh my god, can I still tell my story? Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, I was on Facebook (laughs) and I see this meme, and let me see if I can find it. Put it on his face for a little. Um, I was going to talk about, oh. 
they're constantly mm-hmm. listening, and it just came out, I think, with the House Intelligence Committee or something like that. Apple, Mark Zuckerberg was being interviewed, and uh, he was saying, like, no, he was asked the specific question of, is Facebook taking information and basically giving it to advertisers? I like Jocelyn shared it. She's always... And he said, no, we are not taking your information to target you with ads. Shout out to Jocelyn. Look, if you're using a phone, if you're using a computer, if you live in today's society, you're shit out there. Mm-hmm. I probably have... Well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Don't admit to anything on camera, Ben. Uh, don't ever admit to anything. Period. Don't ever don't don't admit to me that you don't admit to things, you cretin. Uh, it wasn't Jocelyn. You mean shout crustacean, out cretin, cretin. Uh, keep. <laughs> I haven't found it yet. Um, what is the story even about over, bro? I literally, it's gonna blow your. <laughs> mind. Uh, bleep that out. <laughs> bleep the. It it blew my mind. Okay. Here's the meme. This. Let me read it. Let me see. Yeah. No, I'll show it to the camera. What? No, you don't get it, right? No. You're not supposed to. Let me see. <laughs> Did you read the bottom part too? Yeah. Over 20 minutes of research. Yeah. That's what. That's what you have to do to get it. Uh, I don't even want to show you guys because it's so weird. <laughs> Just focus on it and you can pause it if you want to read it <laughs> anyway um oh what are we gonna do about the listeners it's so hard running a podcast <laughs> i guess i'll read it to you it's a picture of, well i'll tell you what the picture is in a minute it's a tumblr post and the text says when you're a 14 month old french infant in a military hospital in the late 18th century and that weird hungry guy comes into your room and then it's a picture of squidward sitting upright in his bed and he's got kind of like a uh oh kind of look on his face and then under that some tumblr user said can't stop thinking about this post i don't think any that face you make when type post has prompted over 20 minutes of research in me before so instead of doing 20 minutes of research like a chump i clicked the comments and somebody had linked the research it's referring to this french man uh his name is rare Terrer, I don't speak French, but uh, Terrar, I don't know. It's T A R R A R E. Anyway, let me just read a little bit of his wiki to you. Please, I'm getting lost here. I've aged two years. Just continue listening. Terrer, sometimes spelled Terrar, was a French showman and soldier noted for his unusual eating habits. Able to eat vast amounts of meat, he was constantly hungry. His parents could not provide for him, and he was turned out of the family home as a teenager. He traveled France in the company of a band of thieves and prostitutes before becoming the warm-up act to a traveling charlatan. He would swallow corks, stones, live animals, and a whole basketful of apples. He then took this act to Paris, where he worked as a a street performer. It goes on for a bunch of paragraphs. I read it. This guy's life, this was in the 17th century, 18th century, this guy's life was the most insane thing in the world. He literally ate, like, cats. He could never be full. Like, he would eat live cats, he would, he would, he would, he got hospitalized for his disease, and he would sneak, the hospital portions weren't enough for him, he would sneak out at night and eat the refuse from the animals, like the guts, the entrails, the bones, he would eat them, and then they kicked him out of the hospital the wiki just casually says they kicked him out of the hospital after he was suspected of eating an infant. And then it just goes on to the next sentence without any... <laughs> like, Yeah, he ate an infant, so he was kicked out of the hospital. And that's why it shows the meme. Squidward is, Squidward is supposed to represent the infant that he ate. This guy really lived, though. It's documented. I thought you were going to tell me a good story. No, dude. What about I was going to be good? What did I even say it reminded me of? <laughs> dude, I don't remember 10 minutes ago. Are you kidding me? I don't I don't think so. That's funny. I never heard anybody answer it before. You asked me a question. <laughs> I I said, gonna... I've never had somebody literally answer me when I said, are you kidding me? I wasn't kidding. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had somebody answer me. 
Well, dude, you're hanging around the wrong people. I don't just... <laughs> <laughs> so, what's new? <laughs> you tell me. That oh, was not new. Do you want to talk about truth and it being subjective? We can. <laughs> I want to talk about media lies. In fact, okay. the intro I made was the podcast I wanted to talk about the lies that you can easily find in the media all the time. Okay. Number one. Okay, we'll end it after this, maybe. Number one, the Amazon rainforest. Yeah. The fires. The fire is very real. The cause, very misleading. Mm -hmm. The above average fires, very misleading. NASA Those even are some facts to screw. NASA even like stated that it was average to below average. Mm -hmm. And I, after looking up uh, charts of fires in the history of, you showed me the graphs. Yeah, saw, the yeah. graphs. Yeah, you can choose which years you're looking at. We're like in a below average. I, was it two, 2013 or 2003? I think it was 2003. Yeah, <clears throat> like it peaked. It, it was crazy mm -hmm. amounts, and it's not even that. It's not I'm talking about. The media has tried to make it seem like climate change is getting so bad that it's causing these wildfires. Most of these fires are set by cattle ranchers. Still disgusting. Right. People got to eat. But still disgusting this is how they're doing it. So when I was reading about how people were freaking out because the president of Brazil or whatever wasn't sending firefighters out or he sent like 14 or mm -hmm. 40, I don't remember the number. It's because these are man-made fires to deforce some land for cattle. Right. These farmers are doing it illegally. It's all gross, but I mean, that's what I mean is the media made it seem like, oh, in 12 years, we're going to, we're already ruining our rainforest because random fires are starting because of the heat from the sun and our gases. It's like, no, it could just be humans are stupid and are burning the forest to put more cattle out there. There's other stuff I could talk about, uh, yeah. <laughs> but... I just want to say that cattle rangers. As, as, uh, That's what I got from that. What I wanted to talk about truth, though, from like two or three weeks ago, yeah, <laughs> was how <laughs> was how subjective it is. Yeah, like I, if you're talking to somebody and they tell you, uh, I'll try to use different terms. They tell you a falsehood. Do you accuse them of lying, or do you believe that they lied to you, or do you think? Yeah, I think the the general response would be like you lied, but that was their version of the truth. Maybe I believe that there are facts in reality, mm -hmm. but how you view those facts is truth. Right. So, like, imagine I've got a cookie a uh, cookie jar full of cookies on top of my fridge or on top of this table. Do you really? No, but uh, let's <laughs> say I do. Okay, you got my hopes up. <laughs> Well, Brendan would eat the cookies if he saw them. Yeah. Let's say I I, I had the cookie cookie jar on the table. I you walk in and you ask me where those those cookies are. The last place I saw them was on the table, so I say they're on the table, but they're actually not on the table. Maybe they're maybe they got moved by Brendan and they're on top of the fridge. Do you accuse me of lying? Oh, you told the truth. Or did I tell the truth? Because I, and that's where I, I looked it up. And a lie is an intentional. Of course. Misleading. Yeah. So I didn't lie, but neither did I tell a fact. You told the truth. Though. I told the oh truth. Oh my god, that was a good way of explaining it because I didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> that was good though. So, and the problem with um, calling somebody a liar or will you tell the tr whole truth and absolutely uh, nothing but the truth? You shouldn't tell that. You should say, "Will you not lie?" Right. Or do you? Or will you, do you tell promise to not intentionally tell a falsehood? Yeah. So as long as you tell what you think is true, at that okay. point, are people going to be like getting confused and be like, "Yeah, I think." So. I think there's a big problem though with assuming that people are intentionally trying to lie to you yeah. or are lying, even though they told you something that wasn't true. Because although it is not factual, it <clears throat> is the truth that I feel they like know. People after listening to this, our six viewers are gonna <laughs> are gonna start like getting more creative with their lives. Like I heard. Like, they're gonna be like, well, that I was, heard that, that was this my. is true. <laughs> they're, they're, or they're gonna to be like to get out of a lie. They're gonna be like, well, that was my version of the truth. Like, yeah. I th <laughs> I listen to conservative talks or radio. Okay, 
And uh, there's been a few episodes recently talking about how stupid it is that people say my truth. Mm-hmm. And I disagree to a point. I think I, it, I get what they meant. Yeah, like they I think it's stupid that everybody's going around like, well, my truth is this. Mm-hmm. Everybody has their own truth. I think the problem is, is people are putting out my truth as being facts. There's only right. one fact, just like statistics, how you view those statistics, though. Because there's only one reality, but you can mm-hmm. perceive reality differently. Well, I'm sure there's other realities, because space is infinite. But isn't that reality? You got me, yeah. <laughs> I would say in the meaning of reality, it's right. real. That's It is itself. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know how many realities there are. But in the one we're in, you we better could, stop lying. We could be inside of a black hole. Because we can't see past what our light has explored. True. We're just we're inside of the black hole and our light can't escape. So that's why we can't see past it. Do you remember? Uh, <laughs> I think his name was DiGiorno Bruno. Oh, I eat his pizza every now and then. It's not a delivery. It's DiGiorno. You know what? You're not getting an advertisement until you sponsor us. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Cough, bro. Yeah. Um, that I wasn't cursing because I didn't pronounce it correctly. Mm. I think his name was Giorno Bruno or something like that and he was an astronomer back in early days of human okay. humans well and the early days of humans or the early days of human like development and like not that early okay. like 1600s 1600s right uh, he had this idea he was envisioning he had a dream and this is how he began to believe that the universe was constantly going. Mm-hmm. He had an idea, and it was, you have a bone arrow, you shoot your arrow, it hits a wall. Well, if there's a wall, there's got to be a top to the wall. So you climb to the top of that wall, and you shoot another arrow, and it goes and it hits a wall. There's constantly, he, he viewed space as this there's gonna constantly be more that you can go to because it's endless that's what he viewed infinity as anytime you shoot shot an arrow it's going to eventually end maybe it hits a wall but every wall has a top it's not have a roof he didn't look at it as if we were in a cube or like a box now i'm saying it out loud i feel like i must be getting a specific fact incorrect here i almost feel like if you shot and you lived in the 1600s, your area would hit like a tree because they were mad forested back then. They were also mad powerful. It would go through the tree? Bows back then, 90 pound. I'm, Easy. I'm more than that. Not, that's not how much they weighed. Oh. That's the poundage. Like that's how much poundage it would be to pull it back. Like my dad had a... Uh, I th- actually, he gave me, I think, his 70 pound bow. He was 60 pound. But you can't pull it all the way back. Like, it's a traditional bow. It's they have recurve bows back then? Yeah. That was the first stuff. They didn't Not have compound. Recurve. Did they have compound? No. How can a recurve have draw weight? The limbs. Oh. They used big <laughs> limbs? No. It just matters what you make it out of and how you shape them. Uh, they did it better than us? Yeah. Those peasants. I mean, they didn't have compounds, but... That's funny, though, that he used the arrow euphemism for, like... Because they had arrows back then, and yeah. they were relevant. Like, nobody would use an arrow. They would be like, if you shot a gun, and it went through six meters of wall, and then it hit a steel wall, it would have to go up and... What are you shoot. European? We don't use meters here. Dude, <laughs> what the fuck is a meter? I was saying it because it sounded, like, cool. Is a meter bigger than a yard or less than a yard? Like, is my yard a meter? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, uh, I know I'm getting part of that wrong. Do you know Einstein believed that space was a sphere? That is, you go far enough one direction, you'll end up in the same spot again. You know, Edison used to sleep with a weight in his hand, uh, or he would take naps in his office with a weight in his hand, so that when he dozed off, the weight would fall and it was tied to like an alarm or a dish, and it would, it would pull a dish and break, and so he would. He would be startled, and the breaking of the dish would cause... How expensive was ceramics back then? (laughs) I don't know, dude. He was... 
He was making bank, whoever was, had the You need to talk about Nik- Nikola Tesla. Hold on. Edison, though, the worst one. He would wake up from the bang or whatever, and he would write down what he was, what he, what creative juices came to him when he was sleeping. Because sleep, it was a study to, like, because sleep is, like, the key to life. He was a mad, disgusting guy. Do you know anything about yeah, Nikola no, Tesla? Fuck him. Yeah, he's he ripped he, all kind of. Yeah, I know the general. Like how, his, like how he would electrocute animals. Right, Edison. I wasn't advocating for him. You just gave me an Einstein fact, and I was like, I have an Edison fact. Do you know? <laughs> Sorry for all the bleeps. I think Tesla right was 14 years old. He was a, he was he came from like a poor village, like 14 years old, and he developed the idea of like an alternator, like, like a car. In a car. Let me hold on. Let me make sure it was an alternator. It was some kind of device. Audible. Some kind of. <laughs> this, this could be your ad revenue <laughs> spot right here. It'd be like Tesla. Audible. And it'd have like a link. Like go to www.audible.com forward slash bad podcast for one month free. Dude, he also had some crazy ideas. We do need to talk about them sometime. All right. But as of right now, let me find... Dude, my, I'm tired. <laughs> you can talk while I look this up. Dude, again, <laughs> don't support Audible until they sponsor us. I'm just kidding. I use Audible. Um, I don't know what my thing is with Audible. I don't know why I keep jumping to them. I just, I guess they sponsor so many people, and I see it a lot. So I don't know why they won't sponsor us, but... Uh, I actually haven't even reached out to any, to any I can't find it. And maybe it was a, um, some kind of motor, AC motor, alternating. He did, he did develop alternating current, which is what would have made him wealthy beyond his wildest dreams. But Tesla or Edison got him to do it for free. He, Tesla was a big like humanitarian. He was all about free dis- distribution of, of ideas. Yeah, and S- uh, Edison was like patent that. Yeah, and uh, he basically cheated him out of a ton of money. And I say cheated, although it was lawful, it was scummy. Yeah, it was a douche move. Like he was constantly going against the idea of alternating current, mm-hmm. but then makes his money off of Tesla's idea of alternating current. <laughs> And we attribute a lot of things to Edison that wasn't his. Right, yeah. I, I remember reading about that a while ago. I was like, damn, I got to learn another smart guy's name and remember it. Hey, do you believe... I want to talk about 9-11 as well. Do you believe 9-11 was a conspiracy? Do you believe it was staged? I can't really say that. On well, you don't You don't have to know anything about it to have an opinion. No, I, I know a lot about it. I just don't want to state... Because there's certain government individuals <laughs> watching That have been watching us. Yeah, but what you glean from that response, go with. Okay. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> um, one thing that would add to the idea of the conspiracy is, you know how, like, uh, if something's confidential, it takes, like, 60 years before it can be De- released? Unclassified. De- declassified. Have you heard that they're not teaching about 9-11 today? Really? In 60 years, are there going to be anybody alive <clears throat> or any young people around that know anything about it? They're not teaching about it because it's classified? No, no, no. What I'm saying is, imagine it was a conspiracy and the government is teaching our kids intentionally is not teaching about it so that when it becomes declassified, no one's learning about it. Right. They're not actively looking to see if the government did that to them. Hmm. You've never thought about it like that. Oh, I, I haven't thought that far about it. <laughs> but yeah, that makes sense. I don't, I for myself don't have an opinion on it. Yeah. I could see it both ways, but right. what's kind of sad is the idea of all these people that their children's or the loved one died, we're going to go, no, it's fake. Yeah. Or maybe we say it happened, but not the way we well, were I think told. real Americans died. I just think if the government did do it, I don't think. Dude, I heard a crazy theory. That. You want to hear it? Sure. I was told that back when this happened, 2001, first of all, that cell phones at this time would not work at the altitude altitude that they were supposed to fly. So how did all these people make these calls out? Well, I was wondering that too when I watched that video. You don't want to know what 
apparently this woman who was a uh, flight attendant basically said that you couldn't make calls. So they would use like uh, the cabin phone or something like that. Uh, anyways, she, we, I will research into it to just see what the full story was. This is just a glimpse, a trailer for next week. Next week on, <clears throat> it was that they parked the vehicle, the plane, they landed it because they were, apparently they were running tests about um, what if these sort of things happened. So they, they landed the plane, they called out on the ground. As a test? As a test. Oh so the calls were made, they were crystal clear. And then one of the phone calls, apparently you can hear hear somebody say, you did a good job. What? To make it believable, <laughs> right? To make it believable. Because everybody thought it was a test. And so they were trying to sound believable. And some people were like, yeah, you did a good job. Then they sat down and then they killed them with a, a, a gas. They killed those people. So those people really did die. And then they flew at that time. They had like these, um, the thing was talking about a, a retired plane that was like in the was it Nevada graveyard? This yeah. graveyard for planes that they had had. Uh, somebody was talking about how they had flown a plane from there to somewhere else, and this plane had like uh, some kind of ability that it could be flown from a remote location, mm-hmm. and that this was what was used to fly into the World Trade Center, and that um, a, there was also this guy that works in the CIA or the Pentagon that did like simulations of what would happen during different events. And this is supposed to be like the same guy who came up with the idea of what would, what would happen if a plane were to be flown into the Pentagon. And apparently that's the only guy in the Pentagon that got killed or something like that. I can't remember all the details. I'm going to relook into it. In fact, everything I might've just said might not be (laughs) what is actually in the videos, but I'm going to watch them. That's kind of scary to think about. I, don't <laughs> I think I read something else today about FEMA camps and the UN troops. and mm. It's a lot of scary stuff. We know all the Walmarts are going to turn into FEMA camps soon. Why does Walmart sell coffins? Is it really? Well, on .com? Because you can... I found Yeezys on Walmart one time because people can sell third party. But I don't think it was third party. I think it was sold and shipped at Walmart. No stuff, stuff for crafts. Yeah, people will go through Walmart. <laughs> Free pickup. No, <laughs> let, me, let me click on that. How much is sold it? and shipped by Walmart? Twelve hundred dollars. Is it nice? It looks like a little kid's. Fuck. Here's one for here's one for twenty four hundred dollars. <laughs> double sold and shipped by Walmart. So the double price is for an adult. <laughs> Overnight caskets. <laughs> Eleven oh nine. These are all sold and shit by Walmart. FEMA camps used to be called something else, and then they renamed them into FEMA camps. What does FEMA mean? I don't know. Well, your phone's out. Yeah, I was trying to type that into uh, the Walmart search engine. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Walmart's gonna tweet me. Um. I don't know what I'm trying to type right now. The Federal Emergency Management Agency. Oh, I don't... I'm very distrustful of the government. Mm -hmm. I'm not old enough to know anything about it except for Ruby Ridge. And then Waco. And Kennedy, dude. Kennedy. I think they just released this stuff on Kennedy. They did. There's... Yeah. Dude, I'm so tired. We gotta stop this right now. We're, right. we're 20 minutes over budget, and uh, if we, we don't have budget. it, if we don't have it as the intro right now, when we play the, uh, um, when you do it, Ben, remember that. Until next time, this has been another bad podcast. Thanks for listening. See you next time.